And joining me now is the winner of the National Book Award for Poetry, Robin Cost Lewis, for her book, Voyage of the Sable Venus. First, congratulations. Thank you so much. And it is a first collection, so it that's is. It's not a debut. bad. <laughs> You're it's laughing. Not bad. You were surprised, I, I guess. I was shocked, of course. No, I mean, rarely has it happened that you get a book published at all, not to mention that it gets attention, your first book gets attention in any way. It, so. it, it's, it's a first collection in, long in the making? Yes, I mean, it's kind of average for a poetry book. Sure, it took maybe about five years, maybe. Yeah, mm -hmm. so that's about an average time. There are, there are many personal poems in yes. this, but the long poem that anchors the collection, The Voyage of the Sable Venus, has a very particular focus, yes. right? The history of African-American women, their bodies in art. Yes, it's actually the history of black female bodies in art, so it, it exceeds, me. no, it's fine. Yes. That's part of why I did the project. It exceeds the national boundaries and even the history of America by several millennia. It goes back even into 38,000 years into prehistoric images of black female figures. So. And why, why? Why did you want to explore that? Well, I didn't want it to go back that far. I didn't know that would happen. Yeah. And um, then once I started doing research, and I have a background um, in ancient languages, and so of course I went into the ancient world as well to see what was going on there. Mm -hmm. And of course, I found images of black women um, in subservient positions or as the tripod of a lamp or the handle of a razor blade or handle of a knife. And I thought, well, how far back does it go? How long have we been doing this to each other? That was my primary question. Mm -hmm. um, and everywhere I looked, regardless of the time period or the continent, it was happening. And so then I couldn't look away. I but had to keep going. But why is that poetry? I mean, why through poetry? Because that's a huge subject. It's a fascinating, important right. subject. Right, right. It's a but great question you're poetry? asking. Um, because poetry is song. Poetry, first and foremost, is the lyric. It's a music. And epic is one of the oldest forms we have as human beings. Mm -hmm. And I thought that it would be really um, helpful and also it would mirror the history itself. If I showed, if I tried to um, capture this history of how we've looked at black women visually in epic form, it made sense to me, um, mm -hmm. as opposed to writing, say, an essay. I mm -hmm. mean, essays are fine, I love them, and I write them as well, but um, to do it with poems, it's like um, poetry is almost primordial for us, like breathing, everybody lullabies. You know, we all know what it means to be sung to. Mm -hmm. And poetry is very close to that, so I wanted it to do it that way so I could keep my reader close. I didn't want to put distance between me and the reader. Voyage of the Sable Venus is an actual, is a painting, right? It's an etching, an yeah, etching. from the 18th yeah. century, 1787, I think. A kind of allegory of a black woman on the right. passage, it's a, right, right it's, from Africa to the U. To right, so the it's, Caribbean. A it's, it's a redux of Botticelli's Venus on the half shell, yeah. um, but in this case, it's a black woman on the clamshell, and she's being drawn through the water by cupids and uh, triton or Neptune, I'm not sure, but instead of Neptune having a trident, Right, he has a flag of the Union Jack, so it turns out to be a pro-slavery image. Mm -hmm. And it's based on a poem, also Voyage of the Sable Venus, titled Voyage of the Sable Venus, that speaks about how it's a pro-rape poem, it's disgusting, how to rape a white woman or a black woman slave at night is the same because you can't see their bodies. Hmm. 1782. You, you, took, you took the titles right. of these art, exactly. uh, artworks, right? Right. And somehow, but then you have to craft it into a poem. Right. So when I heard the title, Voyage of the Sable Venus, this is the whole experience of looking at that image. You're both completely compelled. It's a gorgeous image until you realize that it's um, pro-slavery. And then the title itself was so gorgeous to me, Voyage of the Sable Venus, mm -hmm. right? So the complete contradiction of what the image performed and what yeah. the title said um, seemed to me to be a cue to look further. And so the more I looked and the more titles I found, the weirder it got and the more interesting it got. And then the trick, if to use that word, no, is... No, it's a trick. The it's trick is I don't mind to, trick. <laughs> is how to put it together, right? Right. I mean... How to take all these titles from thousands right. of years right. of artwork right. and create a, turn it into poetry. Right. So thousands upon thousands of titles. Yeah. I lost count. You must Hundreds have. of pages. Yeah. Um, but it was the first time I understood what sculptors do because I could clearly feel it and see it. Even when I, before I even began it, I can see that there was a trajectory that the art had followed or the visual work had followed. And all I had to do was sculpt away 
I finally understood what sculptors talk about. Do, do you, is it important for you, at least for your work, that poetry connect with things, with history, with? Yes, it is. Yeah. Yeah, because, I mean, this is just me, right? I'm not saying that all poets should do mm -hmm. this, but I feel like I'm here in a body at a particular time, right? Yeah. And that time is completely impacted by um, very large and very small movements by human beings, whether it's on grand historical scales like wars or small historical scales like I had a baby. All those things are about our time, you know? They're all impacted by how we treat each other, how we live in the world. So it's important to me that that be reflected in my work for sure. Otherwise, I feel like I'm wasting the, the reader's time. I, want, I don't want to waste my reader's time ever. My readers are very important to me. You know, so if I'm going to, um, I, I don't want to pretend that they're not there. Mm -hmm. I don't want my work to pretend that they're not there. I want them to know at every moment I am thinking of them. I don't necessarily need to please them. I don't necessarily need to entertain them, but I take them but very seriously them. with great respect, mm -hmm. with great respect. And I also assume that my readers have great intelligence. So I don't, also don't want to talk down to them. And so all those things go into how I present the work on the page. And who do you look to for influences? Oh, that's such a hard question. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, who don't I look to for influences? On the one hand, I look to, you know, visual artists, and there's a long list of those people. And, and then there are musicians with whom I can't live without Shirley Holm, Charlie Parker, um, I don't know, you name it, Oscar Piazzolla, someone was talking about his work today. Yeah. And, you know, I look to poets, sure, um, but. It's just a large, lush, saturated field that I go to. Um, sometimes I don't want to hear language to, in order to think about how to work. Mm -hmm. um, Toni Morrison is a big influence on my work since I was a teenager. Um, what she did with English, I joke that I think she speaks 20 Englishes simultaneously, <laughs> that she knows how to do that. Um, it's just huge. It's a long list. Yeah. All right. Robin Cost Lewis, her book, The Voyage of the Sable Venus, winner of the National Book Thank award you. for poetry. Congratulations. Thank Thanks you so much.